girl, good morning girl, time for getting all the way up. It is currently 8.41 and I am going to attempt to do a quadruple or quintuple feature at the theater today. And this is actually a large undertaking. So I made some eggs, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna do a quick little workout to get that off my list, shower real quick, and then I will get in the car, go over to the theater, and around the theater there is a Whataburger, which I'll be getting like breakfast, um, and also Dollar Tree where I will be getting movie snacks for later in the day when I want movie snacks. So the screening is at 9.45, it'll start around 10, um, and I'm gonna bring you along. So let's see, let's see what happens. Here's my little pre-workout breakfast. And off we go. Okay, it is, hello, 9.24. I am getting Dollar Tree and then I'm off to the theater, which has a water burger right by it and I'll smuggle in some honey butter chicken biscuit. Okay, so Dollar Tree took a little bit longer than expected, so I'm running a little bit late, but I did get my movie snacks. My go-to movie snacks usually are Sour Patch Watermelon, M&Ms, and I'll get popcorn with that. Sweet, salty, and sour is a great combination. And then sometimes I'll get a Coke slushie as well, but this time around I just got a Diet Coke. So I made it to the Whataburger drive through I ordered a honey butter chicken biscuit, which is a breakfast item. It is available from 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. for those of you who do not know and don't live in Texas. It is basically two biscuits and a chicken tender in between and they have honey butter. It is pretty good. So I ordered that. That was kind of going to serve as my breakfast and lunch since I wasn't going to have any stopping in between those points. So this is around uh, 9.50-ish that I was doing this, that I was going through the drive through ordering this food, waiting for it. It took a little longer than I would have liked, but I got it. The audio is a little wonky here, so I'll just tell you what I was saying. I was driving across the parking lot because literally the Whataburger and theater are right next to each other. And I was basically saying that it was 10.08, which was a little bit late because likely the screening started at like 10.05, but I had to be okay with that and I was pretty happy that I had already gotten so much done during the day. Like I had already worked out, showered, picked up food, picked up snacks. So I was giving myself a little grace for being a little bit late. Okay, so I'm in the parking lot. The bag is secured. I will be smuggling this in along with my snacks and I gotta get going. So this is me entering my happy place, Regal. If you're wondering how I can afford this, I have a Regal premium subscription, which means you pay like 20 bucks a month and the tickets are practically free. They're like 50 cents for a convenience fee. So any movie that I wanna see, I can see for 50 cents as long as I pay the like $20 monthly. And I go to the movies more often than your average person. I end up saving money by paying that $20 because I would definitely be going to the movies more than twice in a month. And I like to rewatch movies as well. So I went ahead and just got that subscription a long time ago. I'm a very loyal Regal customer. And here's me entering this Regal. So I find my theater, enter the substance. I was a little bit late. I'm not sure how much I missed, but really only a few minutes because I saw the majority of the movie. You are the matrix. Everything comes from you and everything is you. So the substance wound up finishing at around 10, 20-ish, and I stopped and got some popcorn to eat with my movie snacks because at that point it was like midday and I knew that the next two movies I would likely be a little hungry and would want to dive into that. So I got my popcorn, got into the theater, and I came before they had even started showing the previews, but I just sat and wrote notes about the substance while I was waiting, and then I was so early that I even got the whole Regal intro where they do the like roller coaster into the popcorn. And then it was time for the Joker sequel, Folly Adieu. 
So Joker ended a little after three and the showing for Megalopolis was starting around that time. I walked in, it had kind of already started, but it was very, very early. It was like, I probably missed a minute, if even that. Megalopolis ended around 5.20 and I had a little break in between that period and seven with my next showing to go get some dinner. Turns out the audio wasn't recorded on this video, but this is me right after those three movies fresh out of the theater. I was basically just saying that it is a lot to see three movies in a row in theaters, very overwhelming <laughs> uh, overload of the senses. And I gave some brief opinions. I really liked the substance, especially the first part of it. I think the third act kind of lost me a little bit, but I really liked a majority of it and I was surprised by how much I liked it. Joker, I felt wasn't as bad as a lot of people were saying that it was, but certainly had issues, that's for sure. And then Megalopolis, I had no idea what to say about that. And I still kind of don't, but right after I was just like, I don't know what I'm supposed, I don't know what that was. I don't know what I'm supposed to say about it. And this is me just debriefing after the first three. So I ate dinner and then returned to the screening of We Live in Time. This is a early screening and included a live Q&A with Florence Pugh and Andrew Garfield, which I was excited about, and watched We Live in Time. The Q&A had so many technical difficulties, apparently from their side, and it was actually humorous. It kept cutting in and out and it would like go black for a long time. I was playing uh, Tetris on my phone while waiting. And then you would hear like snippets of Andrew and Florence's answers and whatnot. A lot of people left during that and gradually more and more people left. I was one of the last people in the theater because my next showing was not until 9.55. And at that point it was like 9.20. So I thought it couldn't hurt to just wait and see what little snippets I could catch. It wasn't much, didn't last very long, but once I was over, I went to the theater for Speak No Evil and I got there before anyone else. I had the whole theater to myself. It was empty and I got there before even the pre-trailer trailers were showing. So I was just sitting there with a blank screen. But again, I just took notes about We Live in Time and after, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, some trailer started showing that lasted for another 20 minutes. By the time Speak No Evil started showing, it was about 10, 15. This is me leaving the theater. This was at around about midnight exactly when I got out of Speak No Evil. That was kind of the last showing. You can see that there's not many people here. Usually their latest showings are around 10 so that they can close from 12 to 1 a.m. It is now 12.08 a.m. I just finished Speak No Evil. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would actually. I was here for pretty much 12 hours straight, so that's psychotic of me. I kind of love that. Yeah, I've been here since 9.30 or 9.45-ish, so I should probably go home. I can't stay here. There's no more showings. But I'm really proud of myself for doing five in a day, and I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on, in the like vlog style. <laughs> and I will probably say more about the movies later, but I hope you enjoyed coming along with me and watching five movies in a day in a movie theater, because I'm psychotic like that. Okay, so it's the next morning, but I just thought I'd read some notes and give like very brief thoughts. I This is by no means my comprehensive review of these movies. I might even be making another video with this. But I just thought it might be funny to go back and like read some of my notes. Uh, and I realized I hadn't talked about We Live in Time at all. Um, yeah, so the substance, I really liked the style of the substance. Stylistically, it had a really distinct visual identity that I really vibed with. Similar to what I would do, had a lot of color. The production design was really good in that way. Um, it was Black Mirror-esque, which I hadn't really anticipated. I'm surprised I wasn't, I liked it as much as I did because it is very body horror. It's probably the most overt body horror thing I've ever seen. And I'm a pretty squeamish person, but for some reason it didn't really bother me. I kind of just looked away when it was really hitting and the rest of the time, I guess I was just like, this isn't real, it's fine, it's fine. Um, so it didn't bother me that much. Yeah, a lot of ideas about, you know, attractiveness, society, age, uh, you know, some metaphors probably for like plastic surgery, um, you know, things to change the way that you look, obsession with that type of thing. So there was a lot about it that I really liked. Like I really liked the first part of it. And then the last act just felt, 
it just got a little too much for me. Like it was just like a little too ridiculous, which is saying a lot because I can put up with a lot of ridiculousness. And also almost a little too on the nose, a little, I don't, I don't know. I just, I didn't love it. I would have liked it a lot better if it didn't have that exact ending. Um, but yeah, so I liked that one overall. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. I was surprised by that. Um, for Joker, <laughs> in the previews I said, what the fuck, Lion King Brothers prequel? Did anybody know about this? Because I didn't. Um, and then I said, oh, hold up, Lynn wrote the songs? Lynn Momo Miranda. I might have to change my mind on that case. Uh, and then I said, wicked Johnny so fine. And he is, and he is. Johnny Bailey, the man that you are. Um, yeah, it's so green. <laughs> like the first one, I was like, are they gonna do, or is it gonna be very green? Like the first one, it was indeed very green. I just kept being like, why does this exist? That was kind of my overall thing. I was like, what is the point of this? Cause it just felt like it's been so long since the first one. And it just is so kind of unnecessary. It's like Joker did not need a sequel and they didn't really add much to it. Like if they had something to say or had a new take on it, I would understand it a lot more. And you'd think that adding Harley Quinn would be like a good thing and that would be, you know, enough to justify a sequel. But like, she was not well characterized at all. Like she was not, she was like a manic pixie dream girl. She did not exist. Like she was not a complex character. Gaga and Joaquin, of course, did a great job because they're both great actors. That's to be expected. No surprises there. Um, and overall, again, I thought there were moments that I liked and moments that I was like, okay, okay, you can kind of justify your existence. But then I just kept being like, why does this exist? And what, uh, why did they make this? Um, and yeah, it just didn't feel like it was justified, totally. And it seems like maybe they were a little confused about some of Arthur's characterization as well. Uh, <laughs> Megalopolis. I don't, I don't know. It's a great cast. Obviously it's a great director, Francis Ford Coppola, iconic, but it was a very like confusing visual landscape. It, I had, and I, again, I think a lot of this is the point and he made it for himself, which is great. If you're successful enough to afford to make a movie for yourself that only you understand and only you like, period, King. Um, but it was like so many different things at once. Like it was present, past, and future, no discernible time period. I think it was supposed to be New York because they kept referencing the Statue of Liberty. Some of it was like current landscape. Some of it was futuristic landscape. The, the, all their names, it was like talking about ancient Greece and Rome a lot. And then there were some like allusions to Hitler and the Holocaust. And then there was a Trump character. It was like very historical, very political all different times, like they were wearing like crown wreaths and like toga material. And then they were wearing like Marie Antoinette wigs. And then like, it was just like, I, I literally don't even know how to explain it. It just was everything. I, I don't, I don't know that I could genuinely explain it. Um, obviously, I, I don't know. Obviously he's interested in uh, a lot of different things, innovation, evolution, technological advancement, dystopianism, utopianism, but it just like was boring and it didn't really make sense. It wasn't that coherent. Adam Driver is the only saving grace. That's really the only reason that I saw it because I think he's one of the best actors working in our time and he is so captivating and surprising just to watch. He's like the only thing that kept me even remotely interested, but even with his talent, he really couldn't do much to save it. It was, it was, yeah, I, I don't, I literally don't know how to explain it. Uh, we Live in Time, good performances. That was interesting. They didn't do a linear storytelling uh, formula, which is kind of rare for romances. They had kind of three different timelines working, but they actually all connected thematically, which I thought was good. Um, it, it reminded me of some of the older like romance, like it was reminiscent of some of the stronger era of romance movies. Um, and like, I did cry. It was emotional. It did make me emotional. Again, the performances were really good. There was a really good fight scene between the two of them. Um, and it's an emotional story, but so I liked it. I thought it was good, but it wasn't like groundbreaking. Like, I don't know that I'm gonna like think of that movie so much um, past this point, but I might need to see it again. Again, all this is subject to change if I see any of these again. Like usually I watch movies like five times minimum to have any opinion on it. Speak No Evil, gorgeous scenery. Loved the scenery and the cinematography. That was really good. I mean, James McAvoy is, is that man. He's so good. His performance was really good. I was gagged. I was shocked. Now I've watched reactions to it and apparently people were predicting things. I didn't. I didn't predict it. I was like, oh, okay. I was shocked by the little twist. Twists and turns. It was entertaining. 
it was engaging, it was uncomfortable. There was some annoying characters, some annoying things, good acting, uh, interesting relationships, interesting dynamics, and I kind of lived. I kind of really liked it more than I thought I would. So, there's that. <laughs>